Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde and Chris Fuller. And on today's episode of Real Talk Christian, we are talking about personality types, tests, and systems. Everything from the super popular, the Enneagram test, all the way to Meyer Briggs and the love languages. We're going to talk about are these things Christians should do, and if they actually do them, do they actually help you be the Christian that God has called you to be? Fuller, are you ready? Let's go. Thank you for joining us at Real Talk Christian, a place where real Christians talk about real issues impacting the community and the world as it pertains to Christians. Now here are your hosts, Mark Hyde and Chris Fuller. interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hey guys, Mark here. Just want to chat with you guys real quick before you guys get into the episode. Uh, I would love for you guys to listen to the entire episode, but I know it's a long one. Um, but if you are already familiar with the five love languages, uh, Meyer Briggs, and also the Enneagram, and you're very familiar with those, know how they work, the ins and out, and all that kind of stuff, and you want to skip past that introductory stuff and just get into the content where Fuller and I actually we disagree big time on this conversation. Uh, if you want to skip forward to that part of the conversation, that conversation starts at about the 42-minute mark. Um, would still encourage you guys to listen to the whole podcast, but if you're short on time and you just want to hear our opinions fly back and forth and figure out where we came to with our conclusions, just feel free to skip forward to that 40-minute, 42-minute mark somewhere in there. Thanks again for listening and enjoy this episode of Real Talk Christian. Now back to our show. What's up, Fuller? What's going on, Mark? Dude, so I just got done with an experiment in my house. What was your experiment? Me? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Just so people know, I am boarding Chris. He got kicked out of his house. that experiment. He ate all the food. No, I'm kidding. I got into your trash. So I tried something over the last... Not even 48 hours to see if something it was would be a day. good. For, Let, let's just call it a day. It was a day and a half. We'll call it, it a day. It was a day and a half because I also have a job too. But I experimented with having a dog. Yeah. And, and I, actually like like owning a dog and being a dog owner again. Yeah. And you didn't do too hot with it. The dog is back at its original owner's house right yeah. now. But, but I will say, okay, so, so, so. Some people are like, Mark, why'd you get a dog? So, so we'll talk about it. So, um, a lot of people know, but podcasters might not, but, but I'm recently divorced. And so I wanted to have something where, honestly, I wanted to, some, I want a little person to sit with me on the couch and go for walks and have fun with the family. Cause you know, you always picture like, kids you wanted a cuddle dog. buddy. Like, come on. I wanted a cuddle buddy and Janelle wouldn't give you up. That's what it was. <laughs> that's, that's exactly that's what exactly it was. Exactly what it was. Um, <laughs> No, I wanted you, a cuddle buddy. You just buddy. held back your laugh right there. I, I saw that. I did. I wanted a cuddle buddy. I wanted a partner. I wanted someone to be with the kids and all these different things. And mm-hmm. there's so many studies out there for psychologically that kids, like dogs and pets, actually are therapeutic for kids and mm-hmm. help get kids through hard times. Right. Um, so I was like, you know what? We'll try it. I've been wanting a dog for years, bro, which is what it was. So my sister's coworker has a dog. It's, it was a beautiful dog. And honestly, for... What kind of... It was a border collie, wasn't it? It was a border collie Australian Shepherd mix. Mm. So crazy, beautiful intelligent, dog. beautiful dog. I didn't realize it was huge. Like, there are some things that you need I was a dog not like one of my for. dogs. No, like, my dogs are so small. Your dogs are a rat. I don't want a rat. I want like a... My dogs are not rats. Okay. It's okay? Not, okay. They're okay. lap dogs. They're not chihuahuas. They're not chihuahuas. They're not chihuahuas. They're not many pinchers. I mean, my male dog, Chester, is uh, almost 19 pounds. And then the new puppy we just got is almost twelve pounds. I have still yet to meet the puppy. No, no, no. no I she did was because there, after Thanksgiving, on, on, th- yeah, on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, we let him out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So I did meet the puppy. Yeah, because you came over for Thanksgiving breakfast with us. Your puppy is a. She is a palm skin. Yeah, I was gonna say it is a Janiel. Did you see Janiel is trying to get me to get a palm skin now? Yeah, you should. She was texting they can me be playmates. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, because she was. So we're in a group chat, and Janiel was like, "Here's a Pomsky. You should get it." And I'm like, "Janiel, we just had Operation Mark try to get a dog, Mark, and it failed. Mark dog failure. <laughs> like, like the dog wasn't even out of my house, and Janiel was like, "Here's a Pomsky. Yeah. You should go get one." <laughs> um, but no, it was a great dog. It liked to run. It yeah. liked to walk. It was very energetic. And the problem was, is my kids are kind of scared of dogs. And this dog was a year and a half. Yeah, he was taller than Elliot is. So he would be looking Elliot dead in the eyes, or even like looking down on That's Elliot. That's why you need a small. And dog. when you were and you would watch him play and run around, he would be slipping and sliding because he's puppy clumsy still. Right. But he was so much energy, and he was getting into the food, getting into the trash. I have no more bread in my house. Like he ate a whole bag of his own treats. Like he can get up <laughs> on the counter and get this stuff. And he figured it was only a one day escapade, so he was like, just gonna go to town. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he was like, hey, you only get to live like a rock star once. Let's go. Right. And it's, but but. I seriously, dude, he didn't chew any of the kids' toys. And I left him here, you know, work the last two days. Ate none of the kids' toys. He didn't have any accidents in the house. We that's went, we that's a, a good dog. We had a really good walk. He was running all around the backyard. Like, he's actually a really good dog. Yeah. And, and I was telling Emily, his owner, I said, if I did not have kids, or I should say, if I did not have a 13-month-old trying to learn how to walk, and it, or if it was just me by myself, single dude, it's I good said, for him, Mark. this is the dog I want. It's this would be exactly him. it. So Operation Mark's Get a Dog... Didn't even last forty eight hours. Epic failure. So you know, I I I I tried, I tried. So I called Elliot today and said, "Hey, buddy," because Elliot just thought we were dog sit. I was dog sitting, right. which we've done in the past for, for my buddy Swain Allison. We've watched their dog a couple times, and so Elliot's used to the idea of once in a while, Daddy will dog sit. Right. Um, so you know, we did, and uh, I called him today and I said, "Hey, buddy, just so you know." Th- Daddy, Daddy took the dog back early, sooner than I was expecting. So just so you know, there's no dog at the house. And he was like, oh, the dog is gone. Mom, the dog is gone. Like he was like, it was Christmas morning for this kid. So I'm like, okay, maybe <laughs> I made the right decision on that. So either way, I had a dog the last 48 hours. And it I was mixed. not 48 hours. Okay, sorry. It was like 40 hours. It wasn't. And I slept twice. It, I picked it up like not yesterday, but the day before. I picked it up Wednesday night. And today's Friday night. Did you? Oh, yeah, I guess you did. Yeah, and you're I'm right. I'm tired because that thing kept me up, and it was always into things, and oh, man. You know, a lot of people that are listening right now that are dog lovers do not feel bad for you because we've all gone through it. Oh, it's and part, I have, too. It's like, part of training a dog. Like, like I've had dogs. Like, that's just the thing. Is It's like I've had multiple dogs. Um, we had a lab. We had a husky, and we had a border collie. So I've, I've had dogs. It's just... All the other dogs that I've ever had, besides the Husky, that only lasted a little bit because it wasn't trained well. All the other dogs I've ever had were more docile and, like, they would walk kind of next to you, but they kind of just landed. They were there when you wanted them. Here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned. Girl dogs are the docile, like, of the breeds. Yeah. Like, if you get a girl dog, nine times times out of ten, at least in my experience... Uh, they're pretty docile and calm, and just want to kind of lay with you, like. And this was a boy. Yeah, and then yeah, boy dogs are kind of crazy. I mean, it's kind of like humans. Yeah, he was fixed, so he could have been crazier. So thankfully, yeah. it wasn't for that. But but no, he was a good dog. Like he was a really good dog, just not a dog mm. for 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 Mark and the kids. Yeah. So well, Mark, let's let's talk a little bit about what we're drinking tonight. Oh, dude. Okay, <laughs> so I can't have this conversation. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm drinking your Starbucks Columbia coffee right now. No, that's not Starbucks. It's not? That's Aldi, bro. Oh, yeah. I Dude, about Aldi yeah, your is Aldi. kicking out some good coffee. It's pretty It's pretty good. The Columbia's pretty but good. But you're drinking some sort of tea over there? I am drinking raspberry hibiscus tea tonight, bro. Gen Z, man. Okay, that's so... That's total Gen Z right there. Uh, I made some... Uh, goals for 2020 I, I don't know if i think i talked about this in, in the couple episodes ago so i made some goals and one of those was i was going to start having routines to wind myself down to get some energy before I, like, like not energy to go to sleep but kind of like re- learn how to refill my cup a little bit while being here at home and one of those was i will drink tea before bed hmm. that was one of them and and we're recording i mean it's only eight o'clock but i actually want to get sleep tonight because i haven't slept in about two weeks so i'm like no coffee you no need, caffeine. You need to have this thing, a little thing called uh, Z-Quil. That, but, dude, nice. if I'm drinking caffeine and then popping z after that, it's like... <laughs> what? it's like What's that's, wrong with that? That's Oh, dude. That's, I, can, I can drink as much coffee as I want and go straight to well, sleep. Well, I'm drinking that's just my... The way I, I used to be, but not anymore. 
Oh, it's because you're drinking tea. Well, no, but and I'm not putting Tuesday tea after down. small groups. I could not sleep. I'm not putting tea down because I'm a tea drinker. But Paul Lindgren helped me out here, bro. So Paul okay. is the tea drinker. Fun fact about Paul. Sorry, Paul, if you're listening, but I'm gonna go go ahead. And, and before sp- we do this, so if you want to listen to Paul's story about his affair, his wife's affair, remarriage, we have yeah. a three part series yeah. with Paul Lindgren, and it's it's intense. I, it's intense. That was one that I did not sit in those conversations, yeah. and I still edited them. Right, dude. That man is. I wish he was here in South Bend. I miss him. I wish I he miss was here him. in South Bend. But anyways, let me go into the fun fact about Paul Lindgren. So the reason why he drinks tea, he drinks decaffeinated tea. He cannot have caffeine. He's like almost allergic to caffeine, to where he gets caffeine headaches. If he has any type of caffeine, it like gives him horrible migraines. And he f- found this out. Probably about 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago, he found this out. Like, him and I were friends, and he's like, I, I, I don't know, I got to try something. You know, he, he's in the nursing profession, and he was talking to people about it and talked to a nutritionist or something like that and found out that he's allergic to caffeine. So, like, he, that's why he drinks decaffeinated tea. Or he can drink deca- – he drinks decaf coffee. But, yeah, that's not – I've never heard of that. It's not – I mean, it is by choice, but it's not by choice because he used to enjoy – like, we'd go to Starbucks and get, the, like, the caramel frappuccinos after playing, like, three hours of tennis. That was, like, Paul and I's thing to do. You play tennis? Oh, I love tennis, too. Bro, you don't look like a tennis player. Not anymore because Paul's not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we used to play, like – Two, three t- days out of the week, we'd play go like play three or four hours of tennis. Please tell me you got a picture in some short shorts, a club shirt, headband. No, I mean, I, like, like I want to see a picture of I you and think, Paul playing tennis. I just need to get Paul up here. You can come watch us play. We're actually pretty good. Yeah, I I I, uh, I picked it up in college. And, I haven't uh, played since like junior high. Paul's ex wife um, was like a high school like state champion at tennis. And so that's what they did. That's really. that's what where he learned how to play was playing with her, and then um, yeah, so he got pretty good. And then that's him cool. and I started playing all the time, so we got really really good. That was like our thing. So this summer we're playing tennis, bro. You know how to play tennis? I'll play tennis. I with used you. to I, play in elementary. In I've, junior high I've been lot. looking for somebody to play tennis with. It's been years. I am like, so rusty. I used to play tennis with Janiel, but then we started having kids, and it's hard, you know, three kids under three to go out and play tennis. Right. So. Yeah, or I could watch the kids, and you guys go play tennis. We could do that too. Mark, I want to come back and not see you tied up in a chair. So, dude, I'll just sing into the unknown with them. Dude, that was <laughs> man. We are so off topic right now. We but, are, but yeah. Today, Janiel sent Mark and I a video of Janiel was trying to listen to the podcast because she hadn't heard it yet. Because we don't, you know, there's no sneak freebie, you know, for for her either. Nope. But. Uh, she was trying to listen to the podcast that we dropped, and uh, my oldest daughter was singing into the unknown. Like she's got like this Elsa microphone and was trying to sing it with her. And yeah, it was pretty. It, it was, was cute. amazing. It was amazing. Well, hey, so let's go ahead and jump in today's conversation. We're already at like twelve minute mark, so that's <laughs> fun. Um, so today's conversation, we're talking about personality types mm. with tests and systems, yeah. and and some of these might be new to some people. Some to of these me. are really old. In fact, before we started, I made Fuller take the Enneagram test. It took me like twenty minutes, but that's because we kept talking in between. So you finally shut me up. But but so personality tests and types and systems. This is something that Christians right now are absolutely obsessed with. Yeah. Um, no, a lot of other people are too. Like I have friends who do stuff with the, uh, um, astronomy, like, like what's your type of Sagittarius, Leo, Capricorn, all those different stuff. Oh, like what's your whatever signs? Yeah. Zodiac. 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 Yeah, what's Zodiac. your Zodiac sign? And so yeah. there's people like that, like, Oh, you're a Leo. That makes sense. I have other people who are right. into like, weird auras and new agey stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Um, they really became popular. I, I mean, I remember like 15 years ago, like when Facebook first came out, I guess it wasn't 15 years ago, but it was, wild. well, maybe it was. Yeah, I was know. close to that. But I remember like Facebook having like, oh, take this, find out your sign, like right. stuff like that. So I'm sure they've been out for a while. It's, it's a lot of pop they, culture yeah, stuff. And, they've and, really grown. And in. we'll talk about the founding of some of these. But, but so personality types, people are obsessed with these because they want to know how they tick and why they they do. And right. there's different ones that have different purposes. So today we're going to talk about three of the different personality types that are out there. Our first not types, 
the three different personality tests or systems yeah. that are out there. So the three that we're going to talk about today are the five love languages. People know those ones. <laughs> like, that's what I always think. But for, uh, Dr. Gary Chapman, he's a Christian. He wrote that many years ago. It's been, that's been on like the top. It's New York Times bestsellers for like years, ever, years, ever, ever, yeah. ever. Um, another one you might be familiar with this one, or maybe not. It's called the Meyer Briggs personality test. Uh, There's another special term for it, but it's been around since it's been commercialized since the 70s. That's the one where they have you like if you're going into like the business world or something, they have you take. Yeah, I've taken a few of those. Yeah, so it's like, are you like, an are you an introvert right. or are you an extrovert? Are you a thinker? Or are you more by feeling? Are you proactive or do you need to be told, told what to Reactive. do? Self-directed? C yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah, right. yeah. So this, it, it kind of became the standard in how you tick over the last, I don't know, 50, 60 years. It was started right. back in the late 1800s, early 1900, but it came commercialized like in the 50s and mm. 70s. Okay. Um, and then the last one is the one that's taken over at least Crunchy Mom and Crunchy Dad worlds by storm, and that's called the Enneagram numbers. And taking over the podcast. Taking over the today. podcast. And I will <laughs> say this, so this isn't just some weird stuff. Uh, Andy Stanley has talked about the Enneagrams on his podcast. Who? Uh, no, I'm he's just the pastor kidding. down <laughs> I'm at... Kidding. Oh, we talked about him in the church... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Down at uh, North Point, down in Atlanta. Right. Um, he talks about that. There's a lot of other pastors who talk about personality types with the Enneagrams. There is a church who actually did a series, and each week it was okay. Here's Enneagram one, and they preached something in the Bible based off that. Hmm. I thought it was a clever idea, poorly executed, but it was a clever idea nonetheless. Um, but we're gonna jump into these three different types. But before we do, I want to talk real quick about the positives and the negatives of these tests before we even talk about them in general. Because there's always good, there's always bad with all these different right. things. Um, positives, you know, I, I think it's really cool to actually know who we are, how we were created, how do we view the world around us, and how do we relate and respond to others? Mm. Um, because one of those things where it's like, I made Fuller just take the personality test. I could have told you what number he was. And then when he told me, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I pinned that a long time ago. But since I know Fuller, you're a eight. You're an eight. Yeah. I know how you respond to things and why you do what you do. So right. it doesn't throw me off. And I know what to expect with that. Um, whereas I know that I am a three wing two, so I know my natural bends towards sin. And so that can bring me back into the, 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 the part. It's kind of like the idea of, it just gives you clarity on how you live your life. So mm. th that's, that's kind of the pro that I, I think through with this and even how to relate to your spouse, your friends, your parents, all those different things. But the cons, this was kind of interesting. I've, I've listened to a lot of YouTube videos of people slamming all the different personality tests and different right. things. And the two biggest ones that they kick out is the fact of when people th say, oh, I'm just a seven. I'm just a three wing two. I'm just a one. I'm they just, just a lock nine. into they it. They lock into a box. Yeah. And it's like, this is who I am. So take it or leave it. Love me or not. Just it sucks mm. to suck. This is who I am. Only God can judge me. Exactly. And that's what that's what people do. <laughs> yeah. They'll be like, oh, sorry. So so no offense to the sevens that are listening. But I was listening to one person talk and they were like, oh, yeah, sevens are always the first people to be like, yeah, I'm a seven. Like, because they're the outgoing partiers, life of the party type type personality. But if someone says, oh, I am this, that I'm only this, I can't be anything else. Right. Well, th that's arrogant and that's right. prideful and that's not dying to yourself, picking up your cross and following Jesus. So there's so, so today I want to talk a little bit about the balance between dying to yourself, loving others, being sacrificial towards others, but also knowing who God created right. you to be. Well, I think before we can have this conversation, you need to kind of educate us just a little bit on the um, different aspects of some of these personality tests. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, because I personally don't, I mean, I took that test and it's like, wow, yeah, that is kind of how my personality, but like I didn't. Did like, that just change your world? I didn't change my personality to match a number. No. Or anything like that. And Do you feel enlightened but, though? <laughs> Not really. I feel like, well, I probably should take this test since we're talking about it, and that's why I did right. it. But beyond that, I could care less, to be honest with you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but I want to learn. I mean, I want to learn what what the world thinks about it, what Christian society right now thinks about it, what it is, and I think it's a uh, a good place to bring our listeners along. Yeah, yeah, ride. cool. So, hey, let's start with an easy one. Let's start with one that... Um, if you have not heard of this, I'm just going to say you live under a rock. 
in the Christian world. I'm just going to say the five love languages. The five love languages yeah. with Gary Chapman. So uh, Gary Chapman, he is the uh, marriage guru, guru. Like he is the the guy. Um, he's written well. I mean, that's to be debated. Well, yeah, well, he, fine. He thinks he's the guy. So <laughs> no, but in in pastoral counseling for marriage mm-hmm, and premarital right. counseling, if you don't use like a Gary Chapman resource, right. Then what's the I mean, purpose? even Janiel and I used a Gary Chapman book in our premarital counseling. Yeah, so, yeah every, I mean, everyone yeah. does. Like, there's the marriage you've always wanted. That was a pretty good one. Ours was the uh, sacred marriage. That's what ours was called. Is that Gary Chapman? I, I thought it was. No, 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 no. Who's that? That's, uh, oh, I always called it the circle marriage. Remember, we did the uh, we did the small group study on that one. Oh, hang on. That's on. not, that's <laughs> not uh, Gary Chapman. That's, in fact, the book might be behind you. I'm gonna look for it. Hang on. Oh. So, so, so while you're looking that up, um, the five love languages was. Oh, you got it already. Gary Thomas. Gary Thomas. That's right. Yeah, because we mistaken. were watching his video. It looked like he had a boogie hanging out of his nose for an entire that's video. That's right. Remember that? Yes, that Remember was. That? What? What? What, uh, what study was that? Well, oh, that was that, that was sacred, it. That sacred yeah. marriage. Yeah. Yeah, and I kept like I, the booger out of his nose was driving me nuts, but it wasn't. I think yep. it was just like a reflection or like I don't a know, shadow. But every, but it, every single what you learn nobody nobody, no, nobody noticed it until I'm like, do you guys? <laughs> the booger's driving me nuts. And then after that, we that was yeah, like yeah, no one. We that, that was we had no conversations. That, that was week. my fault. I'm we sorry. Had, we had nothing that week. Uh, but so, so the five life languages from Gary Chapman, the, the, the idea behind these is simply understanding how you feel loved mm-hmm. and then understanding the type of love your partner needs from you. Right. Um, so we'll explain that in a second. But the five love languages are words of affirmation. In other words, like positive reinforcement, like tell me I do a good job. Tell me I do this. Mark, you do a good job. Like, babe, you're so amazing. Like, that's that's one of my love languages, words of affirmation. I felt that's that me. on the inside. Another one is acts of service. This mm. is like doing things for other people. Like, right. like you actually show your love by cleaning the house, doing the dishes, right. um, mowing your neighbor's yard. I think of Taylor Axelberg. I mean, the dude's the greatest neighbor you could ever have because acts of service is his big one. Right. Um, another one is receiving gifts. Mm. Um, and, like The way you feel loved is by people giving you stuff. Right. This is my sister. Um, another one is quality time. Not the amount of time that is spent, but the way you spend the time together. Mm-hmm. And then right. the last one is... I mean, physical touch. That's kind of the... He touched me. Sorry. That's the worst Christian song ever. Look, I'm a Gaither fan, so don't you ever say that again. (laughs) So I'm going to share a little bit because we went to our, you know, Southside Baptist Church marriage retreat uh, almost a year ago now. Yeah, back in February with Kevin Forrester. Right. So, uh, and and we took this test to kind of understand where we're all at and... I remember what mine were, my top two, anyways, and Your I remember, and I remember what Janiel's her top two were. I believe I do, Janiel. If if I get it wrong, I'm sorry, but uh, mine were uh, words of affirmation was number one, and then quality time was number two. Really? Mm-hmm. And then hers was, I believe, and I don't remember the order of them, but I believe hers was access service was number two, and quality time was number one. If I remember correctly. So for both of you guys, we both had quality, quality time, time really in the top good. two, right? So it, that's why we get along, right? <laughs> because it, it's actually shown that the way you feel love is the way you normally show love, right? Like for me, words of affirmation and physical touch are my my main two. So obviously, I'm on show love. Most people are like, if you're a guy, it's got to be physical touch. Actually, my physical touch, I think, ranked number four but for you, for me. You give me hugs all the time. I, I, I like it. Uh, I, I think mine were like words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, and then it was physical touch and then receiving gifts mm, was yes, like my very lowest. Service was at the bottom for me. Really? Yeah. Um, receiving gifts, I like receiving gifts. Even I would say even quality time could be at the bottom, too, yeah. close to the bottom. Um, That's the problem, bro. It is. We don't spend enough quality time together, and it's my top two. You don't love me like you should. Oh, wait, we're not married. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry about that, bro. We together like four hours a week for this podcast, bro. Um, but no, but but a lot of times you love the way that you feel the love. So when you have marriage partners, or honestly, let's even say friendships as right. well. Like for me, physical touch is one of my love languages. So I'm like even for my teens and everyone, I'm always giving high fives. I'm right. always giving fist bumps. Always giving the Christian side hug. Always. I always like in some way, shape, or form, physical touch is my love language. So when right. someone comes behind me and puts their hand on my back, that's a positive reinforcement. I actually love that. I hmm. live for that. So if someone 
puts their hand on my back even after you know a sermon and just say, hey, like you did a good job. Right. You just did my two love languages at the exact same time, bro. You and know I'm gonna do it all the time. And that's now. that's the way I feel. Like that's the way I feel loved is by being told you did a good job. You you're and, and this actual bleed in my enneagram was kind of fun. Um, but I actually live off of that positive reinforcement of mm. being told, oh yeah, you're you're doing great. Like, right. keep, keep up the good work type thing. So, so what he's saying is, if you want to you want to make them feel good, just type on our Facebook page <laughs> or in the comments on Podbean or Instagram. Just be like, Mark, you're doing a good job. That's what he wants. Yep, that's and what I want. And then like, send him an emoji of a high five. It's like a digital touch. A digital touch. <laughs> Anyways, that's all right. also why I wanted a puppy because physical touch is one of my love languages. <laughs> I wanted a dog to be able to have a cuddle. I buddy. I told you a cuddle buddy. I wanted a cuddle buddy. But anyways, let's uh, let's dive back into this. Get back on track about yeah. So so the five love a languages. Bit. A lot of yeah. this has to do with understanding how your spouse works and why a lot of spouses will say, "I don't feel loved." Well, what yeah. do you mean you don't feel loved? I just don't feel it. Right. And it's like that because they're not worried a level about conversation. They're worried about what they think. Like their love languages, they right. like that's how they give it. And this is why Gary Chapman wrote this: is a lot of people can't put into words why they don't feel love. So, right. if, so if you would look at Janelle and be like, "I just, babe, I don't feel like you're loving me," and she'd be like, well, "What I'm, do you mean?" And you're like, "If I don't I'm know, walking I around telling like. her like all the time, uh, hey, you're doing a good job, honey," and that's not her love, you know, quote unquote love language, and um, the whole time, you know, she's uh, giving me gifts, which is at my bottom of my top five or whatever. Then I wouldn't feel like, oh, I'm getting any love, but I'm not. We're not meeting each other's needs. Is basically what Gary Chapman is saying in the book, correct? Oh, exactly. That's exactly what it is. And your job as a now, now you are called to only control you, like right. do all you can. But right. as as a husband, you're supposed to love your wife as Christ loved right. the church, right. and to the point where He gave His life for the church. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you got to love your wife in that same regards. But if you don't know. How she wants to be loved? Right? Are you even? Are you wasting your time? Right. So yeah, we've hit a, a little bit on that. Yeah. The, let the me five ask you this: Do you think there's a con- like any bad things about the love languages? I'm going to save my commentary until we've gone through. Really? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go through all of them first. I'm just kind of okay. sharing a little bit right now, but okay. I want I want I want to go through and keep keep the ball keep, rolling keep, because I want to tie them all in together. Okay. At the end I of like the that. conversation. All right. So. Meyer Briggs personality. Then let's let's jump to that next one. So so Meyer Briggs was invented by um, a, a mother and a daughter. I'm I'm pulling up the name here real quick because I didn't put it in the actual show notes. Hey, I closed the tab. That's okay. But um but anywho, so so it was invented back the early 1900s when it was found out, and right. it was done by people watching and understanding like, like uh this this uh this this woman was looking at these social groups Mm -hmm. and she noticed that inside of all these social groups there was different personalities at play there's people who would stand off to the corner there's people in the middle of the party there were people who would make rash decisions that were very emotional then there'd be some that were seemed very calculated and and it was Mm -hmm. like okay this is kind of interesting um and then that sent them it was like a a 50-year study i know they they watched people for just a solid two decades and trying to figure out different personality types and they, and, and this is why it became the standard because of how much time was put into it. And then there was nothing like this at this time. Like right. the, the five languages was five love languages is probably only a couple decades old. I don't remember when yeah, the book was I, written. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm you not sure. You know, if sure. a book was written in the 80s, that was 40 years ago. Dude, you're making me feel old. Like, that's crazy. Um, but anyhow, so the Meyer Briggs personality is trying to do this, it's trying to mainly figure out what you do. Okay. For 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 lack of a better word, um, so it's trying to figure out how you re- how you do respond in certain situations. Right. Um. So in each one of these, it's kind of like a it's a percentage, it's a grid. So you have an extrovert and you have an introvert. And right. so Meyer Briggs is trying to figure out what percentage are you extroverted versus introverted. Like for example, I'm seventy eight percent extroverted. I have lots of spoons to give. Spoons. I have lots of spoons to give. Okay. So, in other words, like I can dish out a lot of different things and go. And in fact, how I get my energy is by being with other people. Being alone is actually draining to me. I I am the complete opposite of you. Right. Exactly. I'm an introvert with extrovert tendencies, is what I like to say. Mm-hmm. And I'm an. And I, I sometimes say I'm an extrovert with introverted tendencies, but it's more the fact of there's 22 percent that's not of me. It's extroverted. Right. So it's the fact of 80 percent of the time I'm extrovert, 20 percent of the time I'm right. not. Right. And like. If I could be like probably eighty percent of the time or ninety percent of the time, I would be alone or in a small setting, a group, close friends, mm. and that's it. And then 
you know I could go out and do other it's things. The, so. I like crowds. I like I yeah. Like they're dra- they're, they're draining things. to me, but yeah. um, so so they're trying to figure out is but, what energize does it energize you to be pulled away? Does it energize right. you to actually be with people? Another one is uh, sensors versus your in, in, intuitive nature. So sensors are realistic people who like to focus on the facts and the details, rather than intuitive people who focus on possibilities and the big picture. Your boys are sensors right here. <laughs> And I'm more... Out of those two. And uh, let me pull mine up. While you're, I'm going to make sure. While you're pulling it up, yeah. I just wanted to go so back. So I'm intuitive. I'm 60% intuitive. Are you? We're like mm-hmm. complete opposites. But I'm going to go back to the five love languages. It was written in 1995. So it's 25 years old. Just throwing that out there. Okay. So so, so it's a relatively new thing in comparison right. to it's this. It's been a quarter of a decade. Or okay. a quarter of a century, I mean. Quarter of a decade. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> But so so the, you have intuitive versus your sensory. Then you also right. have your thinkers versus your feelers. Your thinkers tend to make their decisions using logical analysis versus feelers who tend to be sensitive and cooperative and decide based on their own personal values and how others will be affected by their actions. So thinkers do it based on logical and not necessarily worry about what's going to affect other people versus feelers who actually want to step in other people's shoes. I, I think I'm a feeler with thinker tendencies and that's me i'm 58 percent on the feeling side so I'm, I'm right in the middle and then you take one little step towards the feeling right and that's my enneagram. that's probably that's, that's close to where i'm at part of my enneagram too right and then the last one and and they actually have added one in future years this is interesting so this is the standard one is judgers versus perceivers judgers tend to be organized and prepared they like to make and stick to the plans and are comfortable following most rules that's you bro that is me but what's funny though is uh when i took the test and i'll explain this in a bit i was 56 percent on the perceiver end not the judges end what? which i thought was very weird perceivers prefer to keep their options open they like to be able to act spon- uh, spontaneously and they like to be flexible with making plans mm-hmm. that's it says I'm 56% um, prospecting, but I'm not. I'm definitely not. Um, and I'll explain why that is here in a second. And then the last one, this has been added more recently, is um, on your decision-making process. Um, I'm what's called turbulent. So, like, um, I want success, and I try to shove down self-doubt just so I can accomplish more, which then will cause a lot of stress. So I want, 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 want to the point where I'm like, oh my goodness, this is too much and I stress out. Then there's other people that are just kind of like the John Mayer with a guitar and they're just chilling. That's me. Hanging out, having a good time. Um, so the, the purpose of Meyer Briggs is more to figure out what you do. Right. When, when the situation arises, what do you do? Right. Okay. So let's go into the Enneagram. You don't want me to tell you the problems with Meyer Briggs yet? No, I want right. to. I want to save all the discussion. I, I want a, a description of it and kind of what what it pertains to, and then we're going to dive into the conversation. I know it's kind of a long intro. I'm hoping we're not losing listeners' focus a little bit because you got to kind of understand some of the stuff some before the stuff we before dive we into the conversation. Into all, right. all right. So the last one is my or is the Enneagram, and this is the one that's been most recently popular. But it's interesting. This is the oldest one out there. Hmm. It's thousands of years old. There's no actual, like, like they don't really know where the source of this come from, except for the fact that the farthest we go back, it started in Christian mysticism. Okay. And became very popular in the occult. Ooh, scary. Which is really interesting. Um, now, the Enneagram that we have right now is completely different than what, what one from where it started. Right. Um, and so when people look at the picture of the Enneagram, it's like a bunch of little, like, around the circle, and then there's a bunch mm-hmm. of lines, whatever. People are like, oh, it's it's a, it's a what is it? Pentagram. A pentagram. It, that's five sides. This is nine. Right. So right. there's nothing satanic about it. It's That's how you relate to other other things. Right. Um, but Enneagram is Greek for, like, any is Greek for nine. Okay. And then, I don't, I don't remember what gram means. Um measure rule maybe but it basically it's just nine points the the nine different personality types that are out there um so the idea with this one is the fact of this doesn't just tell you what you do enneagram tells you why you do it what drives what you do and then what are the fears and struggles that you actually have right on the back end so so meyer briggs focus on or love language focus on interaction between humans meyer briggs focuses on just what you do in given situations 
And then the Enneagram's job is to tell you why you do what you do and the, the, the thought and motives behind that. Um, so this is going to be super quick. We're just going to go through it fast. Here's the nine different types of the Enneagram. Okay. Number one is the moral perfectionist. All right? So the moral perfectionist is core desire is to have integrity, be good, balanced, accurate, virtuous, and right. And their core fear is being wrong, bad or evil or inappropriate. Uh, their core longing is just the fact of you are good. Like you right. are a good person. That's that's what Sam Wise Ganji. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Sam but Wise Ganji. what I think about when I think you're good. Number two is the supportive advisor. Now, advisor, I don't like that word because of it, it means a little different than what we think of in context. Um, but the core desire of a supportive advisor is to be appreciated, loved, and wanted. And your fear is being rejected and being thought of as worthless, needy, inconsequential, you're dispensable, and you are unworthy of love. And if you're a type two, your core longing is you want to be wanted and you want to be loved. So the advisor, your whole job is you care more about others than yourself. You're always advising and helping and doing, and you're not thinking about yourself. Type three is you're the successful achiever. Your desire is to have a high status, respect, being admired, successful, and valuable. Your core fear is you're being exposed as or thought of as incompetent, inefficient, and worthless, or you fail to even appear to be successful. Hmm. And your core longing is you are loved for simply being you, not what you do. Uh, type four is the romantic individualist. So these are your artsy fartsies. Um, so your core desire is to be unique, special, and authentic. So you're unique, right. but you're you. So like the, you do you, babe, even though you's kind of weird, that's, that's a type four. Um, your fear is being inadequate, emotionally cut off, plain, mundane, basic, defective, flawed, or insignificant. I added basic because... I'm a, you know, I'm a, millenn- I'm a millennial. Uh, your core longing is you are seen and loved for exactly who you are. You're special and you're unique, and that's okay. Right. Uh, number five, you're the investigative thinker. <laughs> Keep track with me, guys. Um, be, this will be in the show notes, too. Uh, core desire, being capable and competent. Your fear is being <laughs> annihilated, invaded, or not existing. You're being thought incapable or even ignorant, having obligations placed upon you, or your energy being completely depleted your core longing is your needs are not a problem so apparently they're they're needy i guess Hmm. i don't know uh this is more of an introverted type uh number six you're the loyal guardian you're having security guidance and support your fear is fearing fear itself being without support security or guidance being blamed targeted alone or physically abandoned your longing is you are safe you are secure, and you don't have to worry about anything. Hmm. Uh, number seven, you're the entertaining optimist. You're happy, fully satisfied, and competent. You're bubbly. Yay! Your fear is being deprived, trapped in emotional pain, limited, or bored. And the biggest fear is FOMO, fear of missing out. Like there's always something better out there, and you're missing it. Hmm. Your longing is, though, is that you will be taken care of because you're out there partying so much, you want to make sure you're taken care of on the back end. Um, not partying all the time, but you, you know what I mean. Right. You got someone home taking care of you. Uh, protective challengers type eight. You protect yourself and those in your inner circle. I think of mama bear on this one. Or papa bear. Or papa bear. Um, your fear though is being weak, powerless, harmed, controlled, vulnerable, manipulated, and left at the mercy of injustice. Your longing is you will not be betrayed. Hmm. Uh, type eight is, is a big time leader. Um, type nine is the peaceful meteor. This is called, actually, this is just a fun fact. This is called the sweethearts of the Enneagrams. Aww. Type nines are the sweethearts of the Enneagram. And here's why you have an inner or your core desires have inner stability, being centered and peace of mind. Your core fear is being in conflict, tension, discord, feeling shut out and overlooked, losing connections, relationship with others. And your longing is that your presence actually matters to people. And you are trying to, fix everything. Right. So so there's nine different types and this is what's cool about the enneagrams is all every single person is supposed to have one basic number and that's right. your basic type. So for me my main drive in life is I'm an achiever. I want to look good. I want so what's your to number? think that I'm a three wing two. So what that means is you have a main trait and then you have one that normally 
you normally have two main traits right. that are both very high and sometimes are equal, sometimes not. I know both of our top two traits are equal. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, what will win the day? Mine is my three will outweigh the two. So my two is the fact that I care about people so much that I will neglect myself. And this is where it gets dangerous for me. I will neglect myself to take care of you. Hmm. But unless I actually complete what I need to complete for the day, I feel like I wasted the entire day and I actually can't go to bed. So the problem with mine is the fact of I will take care of you. If people come into my office, I won't kick you out. I'll talk to people as long as I can. Right. But I will always get my to-do list done because I want to achieve it, which then actually can hurt family relationships. It can hurt dynamics with kids. It's the idea of um, because I care about people so much, I often bring work home and I don't get it done in the office. Gotcha. And so that's a big struggle with a three wing two. The other struggle is the fact of three wing twos like to be on stage. They like to be the center of attention. Then people think, oh, you're so good. You're so fiery. Let's go. And it's like, yes, I am. Thank you. And I care about how I look when I'm on that stage. So when you hear that, I'm sure you're not thinking that's not Mark. That's not Mark at all. (laughs) (laughs) That's me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm a three wing two. I'm an I'm an eight wing five. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're still learning what you are, bro. I, I'm I'm a the eight is the protective challenger, and then the five is the investigative thinker. This is funny. Those are the two bottom for me. For you, mm-hmm. eight and five are my two lowest. So I'll just read just real quick what they are in case you zoned out there during the reading of the rest of them. <laughs> I'm sure you did zone out. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but the eight is, uh, of all the Enneagram types, eight, st- eights stand out for their decisiveness, strength, take charge. So but they're the basic like leaders. That's what you were talking about, right? Yep. Yeah, normally eights are your big-time leaders or CEOs. Oh, man, I'm I'm not doing myself justice then. <laughs> I think type, type ones are too, because type ones are also perfectionist. Oh, okay. So... But no, t- t- uh, type eight normally are like your alpha male type, in my per- in my opinion. Oh, okay. But and your then, wing, but your wing is who makes you who you are. Right. So and what's so your wing? Type five is a person who pulls back from the world and others to observe and prefers to live in their own mind. They may be wise, visionary, and knowledgeable, or abstract, stingy, eccentric, and uh, intellectually arrogant. Which I'm not. I don't think I am. Do you think I'm intellectually arrogant? Well, that's not the right way to put it. It's more the fact of... A t- so so in some regards, type fives are... You like to know a lot of stuff. Right. Because at any point, you might need to know that information. Hence the fun facts with Fuller. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. Like, like I, I even think of uh, Soche. Like, he always has something to kick out, like a fun fact about anything, because right. you're just full of stuff. Right. Um, so you're an intellectual, you're a thinker, you, you, you consume a lot of content and you remember it. All right. So we're about what? 40 minutes right now. Nailed it. Yeah. Did I really? Yeah. All right. So (laughs) this is going to have to be a quick conversation because we've probably, let's do do it justice. So, so where do you want to go with this, man? So there's three primary personality tests, the Enneagram. Well, the love languages and the I don't, Briggs. I don't so what do we t- do with this as Christians? I don't want to talk about them individually. I kind of want to talk about them collectively. Okay. And um, you and I had kind of talked a little bit about about this while you were kind of reviewing it in, before we started podcasting. Yep. My opinion is, is um, all these tests have us looking at ourselves. Okay. And the two greatest commandments that Jesus gave was love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, mm-hmm. and love your neighbor as yourself. So to me, why are we looking so inward? That's uh, my question for you. And my thing is, can you really love others until you know how you are and how you love? Sure. Does that matter? Sure, sure. I, I can see where you where you're going with that. So ex- expound on that a little bit. Okay, so so you're supposed to. I mean, love love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right. And that and that pretty much is saying love God with all that who you are. Right. And my question is, is who are you? I mean, you're a child of God, of course. Right. But how did God wire you? How did God create you? So, if you are trying to live in a reality that is not you, are you really loving God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength? But is it really you when you are supposed to be the image of God? Right, but 
all these personality types are part of the image of God. Okay. Right? But why do we care so much about them? Because we're humans and we're obsessed with ourselves. <laughs> but is like, that a good thing? Like, should Christians be into that is kind of what I'm asking you. And and so for me, okay, so so this is how I view it. So me as a leader, I'm a leader of people. Mm-hmm. I'm a leader of teens. I'm a leader of volunteers. Right. Um, shoot, I'm a leader of even my house with my kids. Right. If I know how my kids see the world, I know how to take care of them and and bless them. And then if I know how I interact with the world, I know what I need to do in order to show them that love. For example, I know that if I don't get enough stuff, to, like, like even right now, right. I did not get done what I want to get done today. Mm-hmm. So guess what's probably going to happen the second you walk out my door? You're going to get a bunch of stuff done. I'm going to get my laptop open. I'm going to work. Well, yeah. what would have happened if my kids were here? It wouldn't have mattered. Right. I'm still going to get my stuff done. Right. So if I understand that about myself, I need to set myself up in such a way where I can still accomplish what I need to accomplish in order to properly love my family. But let me ask you this. Before you, you read anything on Enneagrams or any of this stuff, did you do that anyways? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. So the Enneagram didn't tell me... or like. You know, I'm not letting the Enneagram dictate what I do. Right. It just explains why I do what I do. So it, it and for and me, so, I'm, a, I'm a person with terms. I like to put terms and labels on things so I can understand them. That's also just who I am. Okay. So I'm just trying to. So for me, I'm trying to get my head around why why it's important for Christians to take these tests to understand themselves. Um, because for me, um, you know, okay, so I'm a type eight. Um, this uh, words of affirmation, if you go to love languages, I'm an introvert with extrovert tendencies. If you go to whatever that other one was called, I forget. Bri- what was it? Uh, the, the Meyer Briggs. Meyer Briggs. That's right. <clears throat> so for me, it's like, okay, now what do I do with it? Like, what does it matter in the kingdom? Well, that's when you go to myenneagramcoach.com and she will help you figure for out what to do with that. For $39.95 a year. I actually and don't know what you can actually, I'm holding it in my hand, she just released journals for each number. So that way, um, like I'm a type three, so I got this. So it even says on the back, why do I do the things I do? How do I become the person I long to be? And this interactive guide, the person combines the power of the Enneagram with God's truth to help you discover yourself and answer these questions. The Enneagram's purpose is to awaken self-awareness and help you uncover the reasons behind why you think, feel, act the way you do. Um, and then continues, I mean, the idea is with this new understanding, you can depend on God and trust God to change you from the inside out. So she, t- she even talks about how the gospel changes I guess who you are. I guess for me, I'm just still stuck on the why are we so inwardly focused? Why are we so inwardly focused in society? Because if I if I look at you know Christians in China, from the stories I've read, the articles I've read, and the, you know they don't seem too self interested in themselves, or else they wouldn't be doing what they're doing and going to prison and and, and being executed. In fact, here's know. a fun fact. You know what excites? Um, is it, is it uh, oh, I forget what that country is called. Um, Francis Chan was talking about this on a podcast he was just on, but it was over like in India, right? Bangladesh, in, uh, no, not that Myanmar, over in oh, Myanmar, Myanmar and China, all these places. Um, what excites them the most in Christianity is not the speakers that they bring. Like in America, you say, Oh, Francis Chan's coming to Southside, right? We can pack that church out, right? Or if we say, Hey, yo, Elevation's leading worship this weekend, we can pack it out. He says that people don't know names over there, but right. if you say, Hey, we're gonna be taking part in the love feast and having communion at the end. Yeah. They said people will travel so for miles. I read an article. Just so they can be together as a body of Christ. <clears throat> I read an article a few years ago that talked about how people in China and India and Africa are like sending missionaries over here to America. Now you would think, Wait, what? what? Yeah, seriously. Wait, no, like seriously, though. They're sending missionaries to America because they think we're so lost that we're almost... Um, as misguided as the Catholic Church, as as a like Western Christianity, and so I guess that's where my mindset kicks in. It's like <clears throat> if they're looking at us as a mission field, like we're doing something wrong here. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> like, and honestly, Francis Chan would probably say the same things. He had letter right. to the church, which right. was all about the fact of we become so selfly inward focused on and, that. And I guess that's my thing. To to me, these tests are are um, accentuating. Mm. That that inward looking again, you know. Uh, yes, there is a, a part that we have to do in order to die to self, right? Right. But we ask God to reveal that to us, and, and it takes some thought about, mm-hmm. all right, Lord, show me. And then you know you, you're you're constantly working on that. But to put a number to it to try to better understand yourself, um, 
you know, you talked about these three things, and the oldest one came out like what did you say? Early 1900s, late 1800s. Oh, well, well, you, the, the, yeah. Well, the Enneagram. Now I will right, say the this, Enneagram was thousands of it's years. It's completely ago. different than what it used to be. But the idea of nine different personality types and figuring out the why to right. the what that's been around. I guess for years. Yeah, I guess you know. But where did it start? Like, who was the ones thousands of years ago focused on it? Well, the people in cults and stuff like that, that's who was focused on it. It wasn't Christianity. Mm. It wasn't believers in God. So I'm just, I'm trying to understand. And I see what you're saying. I'm trying to understand the draw yep. to taking these tests. And again, I've done all three of them, mm -hmm. all right? I came in with an open mind to take all three. Um, Mark, I actually... Yeah, so our listeners know I let you run with this one. Yeah, because I knew nothing about it, and I'm all about. And so, and then you kind of were telling me stuff before we started podcasting. But uh, it, it just it draws my mind to wonder. Okay, so let me let me give you a couple answers to that. Because um, even the the guy at Wretched Radio, I forget mm -hmm. what his name is, he basically openly bashed it. Um, Wretched this, Radio was that um, Todd Friel. Todd Friel, Todd Friel yeah. he openly bashed he's, it. He's actually a pretty nice guy. I've met him and Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort all in person. I, I like to listen to him, but oh man, he's cocky. They, they, yeah, he's, he's a little so arrogant cocky. at times. And right? I don't handle cocky well. Um, yeah, I won't go into that. Anyways, but, so yeah. this, this was cool. So my, uh, and this is actually a fun fact. My my counselor is probably one of our one of our more dedicated listeners. He loves listening to us really? every week, man. So good, um, <clears throat> man. This tea is driving my throat See? nuts, man. I should have drank coffee. I you should have had coffee. Like, big old frog in the back of my. I'm throat. all smooth and sailing and ready to go. <laughs> sounding that? like Barry Manilow over here. Not really, but anyways. <laughs> so why Mark Mar Mar gets man? The I'm cough dying over stuff. here. <laughs> You can okay, cut this. So, so, you can splice that nah, part out. We'll be good. So, <laughs> um, so my counselor Neil, um, when we were talking a lot of stuff uh, over the last seven months of figuring right. out who, like, like he, his job as a counselor is to go, how can I most encourage you to walk in the reality of who you are as a child of God? Right. Well, see, for me, I related to that more than any, and and I don't want to say because I'm a type three, three wing two, but it's since you just like saying, I, it. I like saying that, man, because I'm an Enneagram guy. So. Um, but my personality is the fact of I am the sum of my accomplishments. So yeah. I actually like having my degrees on my wall. This is this is real talk. I like having my degrees. In fact, I view how smart I am for how many papers I have on my wall. And that's not a good place to be. But right. that's my an, that's an unhealthy spot for Mark. Right. Um, for for me. And so when he would come in, he goes, "Okay, you just had your entire identity stripped." No matter what happens, what you do, what you accomplish, you can rest in the fact that you are a child of God. Right. You are a son of God. And, and I think what Jesus did on the cross was the ultimate. I think that's what we you. should be. If we're going to self focus, that's what we should be self focusing and, on. But I was able to resonate with that when I I took the Enneagram test after he he started working on me with this. And so when I saw the three wing two, I'm like, okay, yeah, my weakness is to focus on myself. Right. Um, and this is what's cool about now that I have an Enneagram type three journal from from the, the the Enneagram coach. That's all what it's about is the fact of Jesus already accomplished the greatest thing for you. So why don't you just live in that reality of what God saved yeah. you for? You don't longer need to succeed because Jesus already succeeded for you. I get so, I get what you're saying. I can see I can see some some benefits, but I I, right. I guess to me I'm still not on board a hundred percent with it because it is so much self focused. Right. Um it is, but at the same and, time, and if that's a pastor, not what we're supposed to do. If a pastor was always telling me, Okay, Mark, you just gotta um stop focus okay, like when people who are like, you just gotta do it. Don't care about people's opinions. Right. People don't understand that's my nature. That's my core. Yes, right. do I need to care about man's... We don't care about God's... Or we don't care about but, man's... We care about God's... And that's what the apostles but, said. But I know that's my biggest core. So I need. I, I know I need to do it. Let's throw this out there. Out there. How, many, how many times tonight have you said, I'm a three-wing two? Multiple times. Multiple times. So you're already taking on that identity of not a child of Christ, but of a three-wing two. That's what you... See what I'm saying? Right. There's a lot of self-focus, and so you're already identifying not as... So it's more of I'm taking the focus off of I'm a father, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor, I'm a I'm a more than too. Yeah, you're, you're... Well, not even... It, beyond that. You know, we're supposed to be beyond that. You know, right. things of this world will pass away. I'm, I'm a father here on this earth, but I won't be a father. There's only one father when we go to heaven. That's right. it. 
the rest of us are, gonna, are called brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. But that's the other reason why I like it is, though, is I can figure out, this goes back to love languages, I can figure out how you are, who you are, so I can love you in that regards. To a point, you know what I mean? yes, but the, the issue I have is it's a lot of I, 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 I. I can figure me out. I can figure you out. I can do this. And it's like, no. Like, that's where Christianity in America is missing it, is we're so focused on what we can do rather than what God can do through us. And I was explaining this to you before the podcast of, um, you were talking about, um, before the podcast, you had said, you know, sometimes I just got to fill my cup. And I said, well, no, it's not us filling our cup. You're like, what do you mean? And I said, uh, it's God who fills our cup because we can do nothing without God. We can't take our next breath. We can't blink. We can't do anything without God's help for the righteous and the unrighteous. You know, it, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. And that's what scripture says. And so for me, um, I have to stop being so inwardly focused on what I can do. You know, understanding me, understanding this person, what this is, what I'm doing. This is what I, you know. It's, well, let me ask you this then. Okay. So, so what brings you energy in life? What brings? Yeah, well, yeah. What brings you energy? Like, what brings you not fulfillment and satisfaction, but what brings you life and joy and happiness? Be, being still. Seriously, being still, because that's where I get my quiet time with God. Mm-hmm. That that's what brings me energy if I'm focusing on what I need. Right. So for me, knowing that you need that. And me being your best friend, or right. Janelle being your wife, because obviously I can't be. Right. You still jack <laughs> my cuddle, buddy. But, um, but if she understands that, she right. can know I can't be dragging Chris out to everything twenty four seven. He right. needs time to get away. So, so if she loves you, she'll say, "Hey, I know you've been at work for 40, 50, How many hours this week? Like sixty hours. Over this sixty, week? yeah. But. So, but you self sacrifice and pour love into your kids and your wife. Right. But has Janiel told you during this week, hey, you need some time for you, so you go take care of that? It's to me, it's one thing if, if somebody else sees it right. and knows it. But to me, it's like, like if I walk around constantly, and I have done this in the past, so I'm not speaking anything that I haven't done myself. Mm-hmm. But I'm, hey, I'm an introvert. I need quiet time. I, I I'm, I'm just the tanks on empty. I, I gotta, I gotta regroup. I gotta right. refuel. Why, why am I so self focused? As me, as Chris Fuller, like, why am I so self-focused on what I need when I'm not supposed to be worrying about my needs? I'm supposed to be worrying about the needs of others. That's what my focus should right. be on, not yeah, but, on me. But, but, but for me as a pastor, like, I'm my job is to pour into people 24-7. Right. So, and and I, if I'm not tapped into the source, it's right. the idea. And I, I guess, but the okay, source okay, isn't okay. you. The source is Hold God. Hold on. So here's, here's something that maybe is persuaded my mind, is the fact of, you know, I've always viewed it as, I need my cup to be filled so that way I can take my cup and pour it onto Chris rather than, hey, I'm just a garden hose hooked up to the spigot. Right, exactly. Yes, exactly. I like that. So but, That's what, but exactly what time, you are. You're, like, you're just a tool that right. gets it from point A to point B, but you're not the actual water flowing through. Right, but what gives you life is still that time alone with God. And you know what gives me life? is going. This is what's crazy, and I'm so excited because I get to go to two of these within seven days. What brings me the most life in my Christian walk is actually going and being with thousands of other Christians right. and just let's worship. Let's right. let's let's read yeah. the word. Let's 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 like hear let's pray let's together. Pray. Thousands right. of people praying. So right. like I'm going to uh the the, the refuel worship conference mm-hmm. and there's nothing like a word like there's no other conference in the world that is like a worship conference right. when you're with thousands of other worship pastors. Like right. I mean I know they're gonna play Reckless Love and I'll be okay with that. I know they're gonna play you know, all hill song and like, but if they do, if they play, this is how I fight my battles. I'm just sitting down. What if they play Jesus is King? <laughs> what if Kanye is there? <laughs> you better believe I'm getting a picture with that guy. Um, but I love that. And then I'm going to a pastor's conference yeah. where there's going to be, uh, well, Bethel, I don't know how many people will be at, but there's gonna be, literally going to be like I, maybe 3,000 pastors right. in a room. And that's my favorite experience. That's what brings me life to me, in my Christian walk. When you're with your teens, so, so, I'm going to play off of this. Yeah, yeah. So when you're with your teens and you guys do your yearly missions trip that you do, mm-hmm. and they come back, is there a difference in them? Oh, yeah. And what's the difference? They're kind of like on a, a spiritual high almost. Um, They're riding that Not always. Type. Not always. So I would say because of the nature of how I do our missions trips, Okay. Um, th- a lot of them are more like I, – I, some of them are more hyper-focused. In terms well, of what I'm trying to get at is it's, is, it's the highs and lows, the valleys and the peaks. Their cup 
you is know, now full. Is, is full. Well, and and so whether you're taking them to a mission trip or like for me, like I would go to Bible camp every year. Oh yeah, growing not, up. Not Bible camp, they came and back like, like, like yeah. they were on something. Right, exactly. And it's like, man, you just grow this closest and bond this because you're focusing in those types of settings on the you're source focusing the source of things. And to me, um, what kind of disproves having to worry so much about enneagrams or any of this other stuff and being so self-focused is I, you know, and I, we talked about this um, in the last podcast about uh, Gideon and Moses, you know, Gideon was not the type of personality that was like, I can be a leader and go lead an army for the Lord. He wasn't that way. And yet God chose him to do that. So God doesn't work in personality types or enneagrams because he'll, he'll lead you and give you the tools that you need and the strength that you need to do the things that he wants you to do if you're willing. But if you're like, no, dog, I'm not that way. You know, no, I'm a, I'm a three, two, well, a three wing two or an eight, five, like me, what it says I am, uh, that's beyond my skill base. Then, then that's where you're running into problems because you've closed yourself off to the Holy spirit. Right. But at, at the same time, and, and I agree with that. And I, I do agree with that. Um, and all these, like even the Enneagram, I mean, it says all of these personality types make up who you are. It's more of, it's it's like when you're mi- mixing colors. How much red do you have in there versus blue versus green? Did versus you just go Bob colors. Ross on me? My hair's... <laughs> fun fact, I'm, I might be growing the fro back. We'll oh, see. Oh, we'll boy. We'll see. It's, it gets and un- the Bob Ross mm. jokes start. Let's go. Um, but at the same time, though, but it's helpful to know... The Enneagram, because I keep going back to this. So, like, when my counselor was was working with me, mm-hmm. um, my biggest struggle are, are two things. One is I'm I'm lo- I am the source of my accomplishments, and I have a savior complex of the fact of I need to be the one to save everybody because everyone's relying on me. That's my three wing two. I know I said it. I know I said. It. I know what you're thinking. I know you're thinking, Brad. Hang with me. But, I'm hanging. But this is going to sound really arrogant. And Enneagram one is all about good, like you, you, you want to be good, you want to, uh, I'm pulling back up, um, the core desire is to have integrity, to be good, to be balanced, accurate, virtue, and that's all you're constantly focused on, um, and I focused on that, like, I, like I'm always like, I always want to be a man of integrity, I want to do that, um, some areas of my life I fail in that, but that's not a struggle for me all the time. Hmm. Like that's not part of my identity. Like I, I deal with identity crisis. I don't deal with my actions because I look at it in the fact of, you know, do I mistreat people because I'm so focused? And this is I'm so hyper focused on what do I need to accomplish. Yeah, people feel hurt by that. Right. But if if he's always focusing on, um, you know, a, a core fear is you're always wrong and you're evil and you're inappropriate and you're un- and you're corruptible. If my right. counselor was trying to nail that when I was going through my identity crisis. I'd be like, bro, you're just blowing smoke. I, I'm, I'm cool in that area. Am I? Right? But so, but he, w- he didn't use enneagrams, but he was able to lock in and go, well, what is Mark's biggest problem? And it's Mark's biggest problem is, is he is so focused on who his identity is by what he does, not. So who maybe God the enneagrams you know help help reveal but, the area but, that God wants you to work on in your life. But Neil never once brought up enneagram. I mean, we'll talk about that in a couple weeks, buddy. But he never right. once brought up my enneagram. Right. But what I'm saying you know? is, but he was a is Christian. that maybe he was able to see into maybe it. yeah exactly. But and maybe this enneagram stuff helped you. What I'm cautioning mm. is not to be so self focused. And that's what this journal is all about: is how do you not be self focused and focus on what God has done through you. So I'm, I'm, I haven't dug into it yet. I just bought it this past like week, so because it just dropped. All right. So so I'm, so I'm going to challenge you to do it every night. No, to say I'm not a three three wing two, right and now, not, and not be focused. You know how hard that yourself. is for me to say because I don't want you, I don't want you or any other listener to start identifying as an enneagram or as a. I got to go back and look. Meyer Briggs, or as a five level. See, languages. that just proved that you don't really care about not not, not in a bad way, but right. just the fact that you're so focused on who you are as a Christian, not what a label sticks on. I, you. I'm so focused on what I'm supposed to be doing for the kingdom, and how God wants to use me for the kingdom, right? And not focused on, you know, what personality type of and, and, that, and that's and, just my personality. And, and I'm a firm believer in. And to be able to impact the kingdom, how best can you impact that? This is where the local church comes in. There's too, different tools like, in the to- tool belt. Right, right. And figuring out, and that's what I'm saying. It's, this is all subserving into scripture. Oh, right. sorry. I used the big word you told me not to. It's all, <laughs> it's every tool. I is, want the definition right now without looking it up. Uh, what, what's the difference of subservient? Uh, yep. Um, if you can't define it, then don't use it. 
<laughs> no, that, that, I, that <laughs> laugh. Sorry. Me anyways, no, so it's subserving it's this description. In other words, it's it's below. You it's, can you can move along. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but no, it's subservient, subservient description. In other words, it, it's um, everything is like the Bible is the master, and everything is secondary. It's another right. tool in the tool belt. So if, if you go beyond scripture, where it's like, oh, I'm just a three wing two. I'm something like college, all these different things, and but then I neglect everything out in the past. Right. It's kind of the whole. You know, I'm, I'm uh, successful in life, but I didn't succeed. I will, else. I will, um, I'll follow along with you a little bit here, and I'll say they can be used in, in a good way. Now, they can I, be used as a tool, right? If you're careful, it's with a them. tool. It's it's not, like it's like a gun. If you're careless with a gun, you could hurt yourself or somebody else. And maybe that's the way I need to start thinking about this: is the three wing two? Is it my identity? Yeah, I told you, I challenge you. You already failed the challenge. But, but I'm, I'm coming to your side. I'm coming to your side. <laughs> just, you I'm didn't let me finish with, my I'm messing sentence. with you. Sorry, go ahead. But rather than saying, I was saying rather than saying, I right. am a three-wing two, it's the fact of, no, I tend to go this way. But but I'll, I'll never give up. Like, like Put it this way. I like Enneagrams just as much as the love languages. Love languages are very easy, yeah. but the cool thing about Enneagrams is it takes the love languages and the motives behind it. To, so it's also motive checks for me. Of okay, so why am I caring about what people think about what I dress on stage? Right. Or my or and, and even Scott challenged I, me with this. And I, he goes, he goes, you have yeah. a pastor persona. Or you have a, or he says it's it's kind of like I have the superstar persona, and then Mark, and they're kind of different on stage versus not. And some of that is because the old people can't handle the real Mark on stage. Well, Be- I mean, you're more of a Gen Z than you are a millennial, so I'm, I'm just going to th- I'm Gen just going to throw that out. There. No, I'm not, dude. That's all you hang around all the time. That's the high school kids, I mean, Gen I, Zs. I, I hang out with Zoomers. Okay, it's, yeah, at Mops, I gave. So, so I, you I, are I, like I forgot to record it. I'm so mad. You're more of a Gen Z, but anyways, I was yeah. dropping so much lingo, and moms my age were like, "Huh?" And exactly. I'm like, wow. Yeah, okay. you're a Gen Z. No, you you, you are millennial with a Gen Z. I'm using culture to reach culture, baby. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> And this goes back into well, a couple episodes. Yeah. Uh, well, no, next. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Last yeah, episode. Right. Last right, episode. Last, yeah, last one. La- right. Yeah, there you go. Last I had episode, to think about but, it. So. But, um, anyways, but at the end of the day, it's one of those things where, um, what I like about it though is the fact of, oh, oh, it's the local church. That's where I was going. So Todd Friel with Wretched Radio was talking about. He goes, I don't need these things because I got the local church telling me, okay, hey, you have a unique gifting for this. Maybe you can fit into this role and right. in this and this and this. Which is true, and and that's what is is these are all descriptions of who you are. It doesn't make you who you are. Like I'm not a, ah oh crap, I'm not a three wing two. Oh, three wing is. two is just what I do. How about that? Is that a little better? Um, that's my innate desire and draw. Yeah. So for that, since I just want to get stuff done, if you want stuff to get done in the church, you're gonna ask me to do it. You're not gonna ask. Uh, honestly, but if you want something creative done in a beautifully, masterfully way, you're going to ask someone who, oh, okay, so they're more built this way, which they happen to be probably a type four, they're, if, if you want more creative but, juices in that. But be careful. Again, this is why I don't like putting a title on your personality, because God changes personality. Mm. Because my personality has changed. That's I used, true. I used to be the shy, quiet person that never talked to anybody. I was like... Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's bring the and, Bible in because the Bible talked about the old man before you were saved, the right. new man, and the person who's God's who is is creating right. you to and, be. And, and God gives us gifts, and He to say that God is only going to give me you know three gifts for my entire life is not the best way to put it. So, I mean, because He can give you three gifts now, and then ten years down the road, say, "All right, you're done with these three gifts. I'm taking those gifts back, and I'm going to give you three new ones." Mm. And use you in a completely different way. So to be like, this is what I am. This is what I do. This is you know, this is, describes my personality. Well, that personality can change, but if you're constantly identifying with it, then maybe you're missing the boat on how the Holy Spirit could use you even more. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So, so it's, it's a tool can, in the tool can, belt. You can miss opportunities because you're so hyper focused. You can miss on God. You think you are. You can miss God being so self focused. And that's why I said it's a tool that can be used if you use it wisely. I think. After this conversation, this is where I'm at. I think it's a tool that you can use wisely in your tool belt, but you can also hurt yourself using that tool if you're not careful. That's that's kind of my final thought on this whole this whole thing. That's just where I'm at. Where are you at, Mark? I think we. I, I feel I, like I feel like we kind of both came off of our original positions a little bit. But I, I will say, I, I still fully believe. It. Now, now Meyer Briggs is a little different because there's even studies that show that you can take the test after in six months later it changes. 
because you're like, oh, I, mm. I'm a, because because it, it talks about what you are doing. So I'm not the I'm biggest take Meyer that, Briggs. I'm going to take the Enneagram again and see if it changes. But you have to wait like like you have to give it like a few months. Yeah, no, you know, let's. Let, I'll put a reminder on my phone, and in six you, months, you tell me to do the same. And in yeah, six we'll, months, we'll, we'll take it time. again. And that's what I, I you know. And my Briggs is different because like right now, like if I would, it, it's if, stage if, in if life. I would take the Meyer Briggs, not not right now. I'd say two months ago. I would be more on the introverted spectrum. Mm. You know, you know what I'm saying because just, of life, because of the situation, what happened. I always look at life as a book. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're in a chapter of the book of Mark right now. Mark oh. M A R C, not K. Thank you. But you're in the book of Mark. I'm in the book of Chris. If that's if you want to put titles to it, right? And <clears throat> each stage of life, each chapter holds something different. Mm. And if you only stay on that chapter, you're never going to find out the ending of the story and the journey along the way. No, I like that, and, and things change. Um, I, I will say this though: I still am a fan of the love language. Love languages, I think, are just that's baseline, man. Like, like that's. But it all comes from scripture. It all comes from scripture. They're just putting titles to scripture. Is right. what they're doing. Right, and to figure out how you tick and why you do that. Um, like Meyer I said, Briggs it's, is it's, my favorite, but honestly, I'm I'm still diving into Enneagrams. I'm, it's a good tool. Yeah, it's, it's a, good a good tool, tool. and I, I still, especially for my stage of life, knowing what my tendencies are, what my struggles are. I'm yeah. actually hoping this journal will will help me self because there's a lot of reflection questions. And which is funny because okay, you ready for this one? You're gonna shake your head again. Three wing twos don't like <laughs> they don't like to slow down and reflect. We have to go, go, go. And 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 so that one of the challenges for twenty twenty from this person for for three wing two, it goes it's okay to stop working. It's okay to slow down. It's okay to rest. It's okay to be still and ready. It's okay to be still and know that God is God. And I'm like, dang, come hit, on, hit you man. again. <laughs> but but that's just it. Like that's yeah. that's my key verse is what this person is telling me I need to be able to focus on. So this journal, if you look at this one, and they're all written completely different. There's a lot of spaces to write. So and, and in go ca- with that. In case people want to want to go this route and use this tool um again it's a tool so so let's, let's check out the show notes yeah so so Put we'll it say this it, any gram is just another tool yeah how about that I, I think that's where we can we can come to common ground on it and agree on but i won't ever say they're evil and i don't think people are necessary like, like like my next year slt or whoever's part of it they will take the Enneagram test i will make them take it or like, last time it was the meyer brick 16 personalities.com was another one for that just so they can figure out oh, okay maybe this makes sense because it's I think, just this has to tick. So it's like, okay, what can we do to help you be in that? Because I'm all about like even okay. Max Lucado. I read a book. All right. We're, I know we're, 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 we're flying the plane again. Yeah. Let's keep playing. Yeah. Max Lucado, <laughs> Life in the Sweet Spot, yeah. Here for the Common Life of How Do You Live in the Way God Created You to Be. I still think that's relevant, even though I know you're like, eh, I just, not so I, much. I just want to uh, I just want to say again, you have to be careful with it. Take fasting, for example, okay? Okay. All right, so fasting—it's a, a phenomenal thing. Uh, we we've talked about it we separately, but never yeah. on this podcast. No, but fasting is something that is very biblical, right? But if you fasted constantly all the time for years and years and years, it would destroy your body. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's misusing a tool. And don't look at fasting as a tool. It's just an example. I'm not right, saying right. right. No, I'm no, not no, saying fasting is a tool. I, you know. It's but a discipline. It, it's there a you discipline. go, discipline. Like, like prayer is a discipline. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, right. And so, but if you, you can misuse it, you know what I mean? Yep. And, and that's what I want people to be careful of because if it's like, I'm going to I'm gonna identify as this or I'm going to make people do this so they identify, you have to be careful. And I think, like you said with your SLT, I think if you're going to do that, you need to explain to them what the tool is and how to properly use the tool before you let them use the tool. Right. Again, I'm not going to hand my three-year-old a, a loaded gun, or any, or a chainsaw, without or yeah, without anything. proper training and knowledge right. and understanding, and that's it. it. And I, it maybe just the fact of it helps you see your blind spots. Where are your blind spots in life? Where where do you put more focus on yourself than God? Maybe that could be the tool, right? And you know what? I haven't dived into Beth McCord a lot with this. I'm still on my journey with Enneagrams. I know some people are more obsessed with it than I am. I just get lashed onto a thing and I go, "This is so cool," and then I figure something else. Like, right. so, anyways, yeah. So so. Let, let us know your thoughts. I know it's a long podcast. I'm actually, how about this? I'm going to put an interlude at the beginning and say, if you know all about what all these skip percentages are, this. just skip to minute 40. Because right. where, we, <laughs> where we normally end podcasts, we actually started this one. Right. So if you stuck with us the whole way, 
You are a champ. Um, but we want to know your thoughts. So when we release the episode, we'll even put some stuff on. We always do. We're always. Right. I mean, I've We're, actually our Instagram has been exploding lately. Oh, really? I've Good. been using better hashtags. Um, and cool. Facebook is doing is, is doing well there in that regard as well. So I want to. We want to know your thoughts. Um, Enneagram, Meyer Briggs, um, and, and also love Five languages. Love language, right. If you hate them, I'm going to challenge you. What the Bible says, and it's be kind. <laughs> be kind be and kind. love one another. <laughs> because if you're an arrogant jerk, I will, I will, I will mute that. Thing. Oh man, just let it roll out. Just man. let it roll. File, let it roll. Let I'll it let roll. the jerks roll. I hate. You I know hate what? Jerks. I hate punks. You can't. So. You can't let. You can't let other people's problems become your problems. Why? Because I'm a three wing two. Because <laughs> that's another problem with a three wing two. <laughs> man, you're making your problem my problem now. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're saying no. is my issues. No, yeah. All so right. There anyways. you go. That's yeah, why but, I love it. But hit so. us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Instagram. Twitter has been inactive for like the past three weeks, four weeks. I haven't really and, done and much. And we don't with have it. a TikTok. That'd be hilarious. But you don't even know what TikTok is. Actually, you know, you know I know what TikTok, what TikTok is. I, that's one I do know. We should Look do some TikTok. <laughs> we can do the dance. Yeah. So, anyways, right. yeah. So, so give us Hit your us thoughts. So we are so, like, so thankful that you decided to join us today. But we can't end yet because your your day would not be complete. I would be without. Sad. Fun facts with full, and you would do we do we want to make Chris cry? No, we don't want to make Chris cry. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Every episode he talks about, he did something. He was crying. So you know, you know what? I I'm a softy. You are. I'm a softy. And I love it, bro. I'm like one of the like pieces of chocolate with like the gooey caramel Ooh. in the middle. But no, no, the crunchy kind. You got to bust that seam and. Yeah, like a heart on the outside, but soft on the inside. I'm a softie. You're a softie at heart. Anyways, the fun fact with Fuller today. What is it? Is I'm so excited. Did you know roller coasters were invented to distract Americans from sin? No, what? Yeah. Oh, I was not ready for that. Okay. <laughs> so in the 1880s, what? In the 1880s, hosiery businessman Lamarcus Thompson hated the American that Americans were tempted by. Yeah, I don't know that word. Hedonist? You don't, he, he, you don't know what hedonistic is? No, nope, don't know. You're about to answer your own question. So uh, places like saloons and brothels. Oh, okay, so bad places. So, uh, yeah. I should have just said bad places. And, and for uh, you you millennials and Gen Z that are bars and clubs, more like strip joints. Yes, yes. Prostitution places. So, so he set out to straighten up one of the most immoral places he could think of, Coney Island in New York. There he built America's first roller coaster to give New Yorkers some good, clean fun away th- from the seed year past times yeah dude that is the coolest so and you know why he did thank that? you for roller coasters so what was his name what was his name his name was lamarcus thompson and you know why he did that why because he was a type one <laughs> <laughs> all right i give With up that on lovely him. note man <laughs> we are so glad you joined us we will see you guys next time take it easy Thank you for listening to Real Talk Christian. To help get our podcast into the ears of other people who need to hear these conversations, we would love for you to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. To keep the conversations going, feel free to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and share our content with others. See you next time.